Data of every description will pervade our consciousness. Holograms projected beneath our eyelids. Direct retinal stimulation. Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi and welcome back. Today we're visiting beautiful Helmond in the Netherlands. As you know, we received a 350 demo DCC player from Dan Stardacker, Tandy developer in Texas. It also included this floppy disk. For the life of me, we were not able to find a computer to read this. So today we're visiting the Home Computer Museum in beautiful Helmond, a thousand square meters of the very first home computer to latest generations, games, CDI, you can find everything here. Hopefully they can help us to retrieve the data on this disk. And we're here at the Philips section of their 2000 T and M computers. So we're meeting with Bart van den Acker, the director, and he can tell you a little bit more about this great and unique museum. Welcome in the Home Computer Museum. My name is Bart. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the Home Computer Museum. Uh, we're a fully interactive computer museum. And that means that all computers present in the museum. Currently, uh, we have a well over 500 computers on display. And most of them are working. And if you visit the museum, you can actually work on them. So all these computers are working and you can touch them, you can play with them, you can start games, you can do whatever you want with the computer. Don't lick on it, we don't like that particularly much. But other than that, you can use them as much as you want. Um, in total, we have uh, nearly 900 unique computers. Uh, and if you're ever in the Netherlands, and uh, we are very close to Eindhoven, there's an airport over there. So come visit us and play with all these old computers and uh, try to find your history. So tell me about this disc. So we received this disc from, uh, like I said in the introduction, from Dan Staudacker. He doesn't know much about it other than that he thinks it's Windows software. The software to control the 350 should be on here. We were not able to find any five, five and a quarter um, computer that could read it. So we thought, come here, you know, whether it's Apple or what other existing formats, if there's something on here that's exciting for us to know, um, so maybe you can help and then extract it to another format so we can continue our journey, install it on a computer and maybe get that 350 going with a serial cable. All right, well, let's see. Well, first thing I notice right here, I don't know, uh, it's, it says 53191. Okay. So I assume it's 1991 on the 31 of uh, May. Mm -hmm. Um, given you got it from a Tandy developer, uh, the Tandy computers, which are which were very famous in the 80s and the 70s even, uh, they use a completely different format. So I was a little bit afraid that it was a Tandy format, the disk, mm -hmm. the old TRS-80. But since this is 1991, it's highly unlikely they used the TRS-80 to, to format this. And especially because it's DCC, which is kind of newer than uh, than the Tandy Z Z80 machines. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in uh, our uh, read machine, uh, which also has a USB. So we can actually extract files from here and put it on the USB stick, if you want. Okay. So let's try that on a normal DOS computer first. Okay. Indiana Jones 2.0. Yeah. Let's try this. <laughs> Come on. So yeah, this is uh, a, a terrible Windows 98 machine. <laughs> Because Windows 98 actually does support USB, so that's the reason why we use Windows 98. It's a Pentium uh, 2 350, and we used uh, two floppy disks here. One is 1.2 megabyte, and one is 360. Because we also use this computer to create disks. And there's a big uh, problem if you create 360K disks in a 1.2. So that usually doesn't work, therefore we have two disks. And this one is not connected at the moment. Um, but we, are, we have USB versions of that, so we don't bother to connect here. So let's first try it to read it in the 1.2. Okay. 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 Uh, let's see. I have no idea. Ah, there's one. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so we have two uh, things oh, in there. Directory and uh, so let's copy it to make sure it's safe somewhere. 
Mm. Oh, we really have to clean the computer up sometimes. Yeah, this is a mess. Alright, uh, uh, let's go. Okay. Copy. Wow, it's a basic. It's a basic file. Probably quick basic. My guess. I don't know if I have quick basic. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's. Uh... Oh wow! I, I said it was Windows 98, right? Yeah. It's Windows Millennium. Oh. <laughs> Okay. See, Windows Millennium does work. <laughs> In 16 colors, though. Ah. Uh, uh, do I have quick basic? No, I don't have quick basic. Never mind. Let's see. Look, basic program. Yes, it's cool. This is basic. That's yeah, quick basic. Last, latest. Hope you can read it. Oh, very cool. Yeah, that's the that's the developer, uh, Dan, Dan Stardaker. Cool. Okay. Well, we call that a success. Easy success. It's easy. So <laughs> now we copy it to USB and then yeah. uh, we'll take it on to the next level. All right. Yeah, you have uh, the source code as well, so you can, you know, create your own thing or fix it. 30 May of 1991. 31. Oh. He worked on it until August ninety one. In basic, wow, that's that's a really that's a surprise <laughs> to you. Yeah, it's kind of a surprise. I mean, I I would think it would be C or something like that, or even mm -hmm. Pascal, or but basic. Oh. Well, apparently it works. So. Very cool. Shall we start it? See what it does. Probably nothing. Let's try to start it. Just for that. Doesn't do it. It's uh, yeah, and now we need a cable. <laughs> yeah, and the device, most yeah. likely, right? Yeah. So what what do you what is your expectation? What would it do? It would like communicate with the device, and yeah. you would be able to control play and control uh, fast forward, or yeah. would you be able to to send the program into the? Um According to what I know about, well, this is something else, I think. Maybe, I don't know. It's... This is directly, I think, directly communicating with us with the serial port. Let's see, really. What this is going to do. But this is different than the, the DCC. This is a term. So this is probably a terminal to directly control the DCC player. So you can actually read and write data into the terminal, or at least write in directly into the DCC player mm -hmm. or device. 
I guess. Past, that's that's the compiled stuff. And the latest has some source codes on it. To be used as interface with the mainboard controller to simulate the front panel where the PC will issue commands to the mainboard upon a keyboard press. So, so it says here has all these constants defined. So this is actually the bytes or at least the data sent to the device to do the particular commands, I guess. Yeah, they use the uh, the prototype to program their display and their control buttons on the uh, Optimus 2000. Okay, and that, because this is this is the terminal, so this is basically a dumb program that only can communicate directly. And if I go to so the newest one is DCC8. Do I want to continue? Uh, I guess so. I have VGA on this computer. And I've come to, I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so, yeah. Right now, yeah, I guess if you connect the, the, the device, it will do something. Yeah. It will. Now I wish I brought it after this success yeah. because we would have easily uh, gotten a serial cable and hooked it to the, the 350 because it's it's fa fairly compact. Uh, maybe uh, maybe we can do that in Los Angeles with uh, Jacques Houtsmit and otherwise um, sure we'll we'll bring it back. <laughs> it's not it's not a big um, it's not a big uh, unit. You only need a computer with a serial interface. Yeah, yeah, we have several Windows 98 computers at uh, at the museum, so yeah, that's it's now it. actually working on Windows Millennium. So if yeah. it works on Millennium, it should work on 98. Yeah, yeah, cool. I um, I brought a USB stick with me, so we can uh, we can copy that uh, right. over. Cool. So, but that's actually fantastic news because that was a, an easy um, easy transformation, and it was way more than we anticipated. So, um, so we have an emulator and software to potentially control the and device. The source. And the source and code. And the source code. That's okay. even more important, the source code. Okay, so all we now need is a serial cable, uh, hook the device up and see where it leads us. Exactly. Okay, thank you buddy. And um, welcome. if nothing else, come to the Netherlands, visit Helmond, come to the Home Computer Museum, ask for Bart. If he's not here, all the other volunteers are willing to help you here as well. Absolutely. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Bye bye.